Well, I like to try to. Don't circulate. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Marston. Um, we'd like to thank everybody for coming this late to sit through our seminar. We are very thankful for that. Any of you get to go through the tour this weekend, this week? Thank you. I hope you guys had a good time. It was a very cool. And uh, were there any questions that weren't asked or you wanted to ask before we get going on that tour? No? Okay. Just no pictures at that point in time. But um, we're going to go into talking about Barrios. Yeah, so I have everything here. You, yeah. You're right. There you go. I have the, I have the presentation. We're going to give ourselves over to Steve Bell. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Go Home Show. Thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. We thought it was going to be the expo that's, hall closed, and then everyone room. came up here. But I guess they're keeping it open until 12. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. So you right. chose to be here instead of downstairs. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for choosing this. Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. You sure? We always have a choice. You chose to be here. <laughs> so let's just talk about this for a second. Um, we all know about Barry Osler's game, last game. And Steve Bowden was co-designer with Barry on this game, and he also worked with Ryan uh, on some of the parts, and so did Dennis. So the three of them together brought together Barry's Owlser's last game, and Steve would, ran the lion's share because he spent a good part of time with our yeah. good friend Barry and uh, put it all together and spent a lot of hours working over the rules and the shots and the things. So we're going to go into a little more depth tonight about that. Yeah, we have – yeah, I have some history here. Um, once we go through this, if you do want to refresh our history, we do have on AmericanPinball.com a video about the history and the development of Barry O's Barbecue Challenge. Available there. Also available are the uh, secrets. It's called the secret sauce of yep. Barry's – where we talk about, I'm going to talk about it here, where we talk about some of the inspirations from Barry's other games that are also in this game to fully honor Barry and his memory. But to and begin, oh, go ahead. Before we get in too into it, um, just because a couple people have come up to me about this, uh, does anyone here not know who Barry Osler was? I got one. That's enough for me. Like, mm -hmm. There's a, at least a few yeah, people to, yeah. who don't know who Barry Osler is, so I guess we should get a little bit into that um, Barry Osler was a famous pinball designer from what, when, when was the first 40 game? Forty-year career. Forty-year career. career. Williams. Yeah. And uh, I'll I'll tell this story. Um, there was another game designer that was brought in from California, and um, that uh, thank you, Mr. Marston. Uh, that uh, designer was, um, you know, not Steve Cordex first picked. So he says, I'll work with this guy, but I want Barry Osler uh, off the line as my new young designer. And uh, Steve Kordak trained him and did an awful lot with that. So that's when he... Around when was that? Huh? When was that? Roughly? It's about 74. 74? Yeah. So he's designed... He designed... How many a, games? Like almost, almost 30. Presentation. I like thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. He's designed an awful lot. Uh, let me think. Okay, so like there's Phoenix. Professional. Phoenix, Phoenix yeah. mousing yeah. around space shuttle, space station. We'll, um, we'll get to that. Start okay. naming okay. them all. We'll but, get to it. Yeah, Steve that's, will get to that's that. That's who Barry Osler is. He yeah. is an industry legend. Uh, he, if you, if you're in the industry, he's a household name, um, and he is the designer of this game. And he unfortunately passed after completing his first draft of the game. So that is what we're going to give you. Is we're going to give you the story of how it was completed. And uh, how we were able to bring that final game to you, um, even though we did not have his help to finish it. Correct. Right. And also understand, Barry Elsler was known in the industry as the fastest gun and uh, the fastest designer. And he still lived up to that legend with this because we asked him to start. And six months later, he had it done. Uh, needed some revisions and some small changes, but with the bulk, 90% of it is his. So, Stephen? All right, let's show how this started. So here is Car Hub, quotation marks. Now we know that there is another game called Car Hub, so we can, can obviously keep the name of Car Hub. But this is, uh, you know, on, on one of the uh, trips that I took to Barry's house to hang out with him, and we had some of our meetings, this is what we discussed. 
This is and this now, is this the is, same as that other car. This is right? down in San. No, no, no. This is a totally different game. This is totally different. Right. Game. But this is just the code name. This is it was the code name first. But mm-hmm. yeah, in one of in one of those uh, meetings, uh, meeting with his family, and then we we retire to the study, and in the study we had this, and we start discussing some uh, some things about initial rules and other. And pardon me, I'm going to start jumping around to other resources that are not this, just to show you for the history of what what we of how we did this. So. Um, you can see that um, most of what is on Barrio's Barbecue Challenge has remained from Car Hop. There are some additions, but we did our very best to try to keep Barry's initial vision intact as much as we could. And I, as Barry's surrogate, was de- were just determined to do that. Right. So uh, initially, I'm going to jump to the first thing. Where is it? Let's see, the first thing we ever... Let's see, I can't find. I want to find the first, the first actual writings that was ever about, mm. you know. <laughs> and yep. I know I yep. have it here. Um, no, nope, that's don't look, let friends use mouse trails. No, I love, I love <laughs> mouse trails. Wee. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. Windows <laughs> ninety five called. So this was the first ever text of written on anything that we had discussed. Like, okay, let's just. We have this task, let's get something down. We've got other stuff to do because, you know, we were thinking about other things in San Antonio. Um, so uh, so we had some things written down, just basic, you know, uh, things that we were working on. And you can notice that the ramp spinners were in the original discussion. Wasn't right. that the original prompt that you gave David to uh, to Barry? I, I, I was told, and then actually I've been re- repeating this story as if it were fact today to Emily, so I hope I'm telling you the truth. Um, I was told that his initial prompt for the game's design was give me a game with ramp spinners. Yes. And then and, run with that. And, and also be like Space Shuttle. Pay, yeah, homage, homage, pay homage to Space, space shuttle. shuttle. Okay, I missed that second one. Which made me very happy. Yes. Because Space very Shuttle was happy. my first pinball game I ever played, period. That was and my I, first and favorite. And I Space Shuttle, too. My so, first favorite. So when Barry and I were communicating that news, I'm like, oh, great. Let's, you know, LFJ, let's go, right? Because that's, <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. that's my first game I ever played was Space Shuttle. It got me into the hobby. So I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's reduce, you know, this game. So let me go back to... One of the, one of the things the I think I remember of, saying to Barry go. also when we said about Space Shuttle was that game, unfortunately, couldn't get all the rules and what what we could do now with rules and depth in depth rules and cool graphics and cool stuff that you couldn't get back in that small EEPROM on the board that you know Williams and you only had those little sounds right you only had the little you know that was it you know but now we could actually have a lot more into this yeah. game but that was the best part about barry's designs is they were interesting and fun even without the extra like rule depth like you you only had three major features and scoring opportunities in space shuttle but they never got boring correct like you could play it all day and it was different it was easy to learn impossible to master unless you're steve well <laughs> i mean well you want to see some master space shuttles in the tournament downstairs right now in the classics i'm afraid so it is being represented so i'm definitely Prepared to see some people turn over yeah. space shuttle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I've, I've gotten close, but I've never done it myself. But I've I've always said from the very beginning, if you have a game that is fun without a crap load of rules and without a bunch of assets and with very minimal support, then you have a winner. And that was almost every single one of Barry's games. Yes. Every absolutely. single one. It, and if you could do a, a remastered of any of them, like it would, it would, they would all hold up today. So, so with that, you can sort of see some of the space shuttle ness. See, here's the locks on either side here. You know, that's sort of carrying through here, right? But uh, it will get even more detailed as we go to the next version, where we start discussing, well, what even is the car hop? Okay, well, car hop food, serving food. Okay, so we got, we're gonna serve malts, we're gonna serve soda, all that. We're over here. We have burgers here. We have burgers here. We have fries here. And we have burgers, fries, and drinks here at this lock here. And also we have right here is the three drop targets on in this area. Can you zoom in? All right, let's see. Can I go further control, in? Can I control, control plus? No, it won't let me control plus. Dang it. 
back. That's, that's there was a chance. Maybe I can come out like this and control plus. Ooh, like there that. you go. You got yeah. It. All right, maybe I did it. Let's see. All right, it. let's. All right, there it is. Over there. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I re I went re I went further further than I wanted to, but yeah, you can see the the three um, drop target banks. The th the three drop targets were here on the far right, and um, that was an idea we had. <laughs> well, that was what Mary's first idea was. All right. And so it's it's it kind of works. We wanted it to work. Didn't really work like we wanted it to. So that's why you see it in the classic space shuttle position now. All right. So. One of the other I mean, problems. well, we built it like that. We, yeah. We, we yeah. did. So um, one of the first things I remember problem. that we all agreed upon when we decided that, all right, Barry's game is going to be our next game. We're, we're pivoting everything. We're changing. I mean, and we'll get into the story of, like, you know, the day we found out and how that all happened. But um, one of the very first things we all agreed upon, everyone in the entire office, is – all right, we're not changing a single post. We're building it exactly as his first draft says. So we can, like, we will experience exactly what he put on this paper, even if we don't agree with it before we change anything. And so we did that. Um, I was brand new to the company at the time. I was, we were all blindsided, but I was also blindsided and mostly useless because I was untrained and there was no one ready to really even give me anything to do. So I did the only thing I knew how to do at the time, which is I took, I, I literally stole the drawing. Um, I remember Steve being mm -hmm. like, do you have the drawing? Like the next day, like, where, where is it? Who has it? I stole it. Uh, I scanned it and I brought it into the program that I always use, uh, Visual Pinball. So that's my white wall, white wood X or white wood zero kind of thing. I always mess around with it as simulator because it's a pretty accurate simulator. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's, really really close and you can get a really good feel of what something feels like before you even ever build anything so i i literally imported the drawing that i stole into visual pinball and i overlaid every single part exactly as it was because i didn't know how else to help i had no idea what to do no one had any time to talk to me even but i had to be part of the team and i had to further the project somehow so i just brought what i knew and then two days later, yeah. while everyone is still pivoting everything else in the company, I, I come to them and I'm like, do you guys want to play it? And we were like... And they're like, what? Exactly. What do you mean you want to play it? It's been two days. I'm like, yeah, here it is. Yeah. Turn around. Press play on the computer. Um, you can... It, it's not perfect, but it's... You gave us ideas. It's something. There it is. Um, All right. There it is. Um, I, mm. you can, but I did not. I, there is very minimal rulage. I did implement the multi-ball so that you could do like one, you can see yep. on the left, there's a, there's the insert blinking. So I did some basics just so we could experience, like you need to know if a game plays well in multi-ball. You need to well know how the locks feel. So I did implement locks from, I just copy pasted code from an old project I had. Mm -hmm. Uh, if he, if he unmuted this, you would actually hear the, uh, the callouts I paid for for my fake right. total nuclear annihilation <laughs> thing in my lock, in lock my one. in my Sonic homebrew. Like, oh, one. It's, it's my, my my friend Jen from <laughs> college <laughs> just going. I was like, give me an English robot voice, and she did it. So it, it's in there. there just, it um, and that was the only, that was how I was able to contribute. And they were just like, oh, all right, well we can we can try it. And hey, it's kind of fun. Let's build it just like this. So. And this here is also where we were, we're found, we found out the uh, slight impracticality, impracticability, whatever that word is, of the of the three bank being on the right. Yeah. Right. So it's like, is it good? Yeah. Is it great? Yeah. No. We it's couldn't, not. We couldn't sweep them in the sim, um, and on the way out, it would bonk and sometimes go in the left out lane, and that this is the That's first right. sign of like, oh, sometimes this is a problem. Right. Uh, also, his original shooter lane design in this simulation would hit the left targets and go in the left out lane like 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. So we were like, all right, we've got to watch that when we build it for real. That might be a problem. But now, we had of, an insight two days two days into the project. Now, one, no, now one, one of the rules that we were going to try to build on with having the targets here is to qualify the burgers, fries, and drinks here and then use the Super Bowl drop targets to have an increased award up here. Mm -hmm. That was going to be part of the plan there. But again, impractical. Really disproved it. It saved us a lot of time, so it was a necessary change. 
So I will stop this now. I'm just going to throw this out there. Wasn't it also Dennis who said because the draft targets were facing the wrong? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That Dennis was huge made, on that. Yeah, Dennis, ball Dennis, Dennis was stopped. responsible. Dennis for that. was huge on that. Yeah. yeah. Because you know we was he was looking at it, it was like and, and I'm in I'm in his office and I'm looking at it and it's just like yeah we it can't be there it's, yeah. we have to move it here which is in the traditional space shuttle the most position. satisfying time you would hit him it would be on the way well, out of the saucer so you didn't right. even do it you'd hit the saucer and then it would come out and hit some drops and it's like oh cool but I didn't do that right like the game did it for you the game did it for you which is okay but it's not as fun as sweeping them on space shuttle so like we wanted to capture that so and i think um you know that's one of the things that ryan brought to us was the vpx you know working with this dennis got to start playing with it starting to flip it i remember steve he didn't like it but it, it's no, still fun he was trying to figure it out with the you know but steve got right into this and you guys started saying yeah there's some shots here we can definitely work we're working on the rules so it's cool all right. Well, the next the next slide is about the mini screen, so that goes a little bit further. Oh, yeah, I mean, that yeah. kind of goes that kind of goes off yeah. the rails. You want to go into like how like the how, day how pivoted? Yeah, the day. Like, uh, we, well, we stop getting making jokes and it yeah, starts getting sad. Yeah, yeah, only for a little, just for a little while. Well, not, it'll come not back. Too up. long. I can't keep my mouth not shut. Not too long. long, but yeah, I I get a call from Kathy. I'm in the office. I'm in the office pretending to be a salesman and I get a call and I get the news and you know it's like okay I have to prepare to tell someone I'm going to go tell Dave about it I don't know whether you already knew when I went in your office mm -hmm. I was because you because you because you saw the look on my face and you knew what I was going to well, tell you well and so I, I, I had taken Ryan out to breakfast mm -hmm. because he was in town for the first time and then Ryan and we, we were waiting there was a supplier for some targets supplier and we're sitting there at breakfast and ryan looks at me and he's like you know i just you got a text and text. he and looks just, at his phone he just says oh no yes and he just sinks and i have up until this point i had never seen this man rattled before i'd seen him mad i'd seen him dealt curveballs i had never seen energy drain out of him before that and i just go no no sass no jokes no nothing just what happened yeah and and as far as on my part i mean i was uh you know adjusting to the situation because i mean you know part of the plan was that barry went barry and i were going to work together and make pinball games and he was going to train me mm -hmm. in the barry philosophy to be a pinball designer correct he was supposed to be one of my two mentors right i was supposed to come on to american pinball and the plan was for me to be trained by dennis norman and barry osler that is That's literally right more than any aspiring designer could ever ask for yep and i un i had not met him but i was told like he oh my god barry's so excited to meet you and start teaching you he was enthusiastic about being a teacher yep and i never got the chance i never got to meet him so understand it was like three or four days earlier it was friday i'm in new york i'm looking and barry had just we've been on a phone call uh video chat He's showing me the whole layout. He's going to be sending this off to Zofia, and uh, he was all excited about it. And uh, we were making plans. We were literally making plans. I said it was. Uh, I said, listen, it's going to be a month or two. We're going to put the white wood together, and you know, you're in Texas, and how you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. You know, I'm going through some stuff. And I said, well, probably end of March, beginning of April, let's have you in to shoot the white wood. And uh, he's like, that sounds great. Let's do this. I'll be done with some of my treatments by then. This would be great. We all, we had all these plans, and yeah, that's when he told you about about his treatments, right? Yeah. And you and that's when yeah. you fast tracked his health care. Well, that was a little earlier because okay. that's when you know when he left when Voldemort Voldemort yeah he who should not be named he did yes not be when named. Voldemort dissolved and poor Barry got left out in the cold nasty, um, yeah. nasty he didn't have anything. So we immediately fast-tracked him, and we started doing all this stuff. And we didn't make the announcement of him joining the crew until almost, I don't know, three or four months later. That's um, not right, yeah. And we, we didn't need to announce it right away. And by the time, uh, about three or four weeks after the announcement, I, I'm going to say, he, uh, we, we had his design. So that's how fast he was. He was very quick. Um. And then, like I said, we came in the office. I came in the office after breakfast. 
Ryan knew that I was uh, rattled. I was like, I already told Ryan. I says, I, I got to make sure that this is true. Right. And as soon as I, at some point, it's, you had come in. I was just, I had finished talking with Kathy at that point. You yep. had come in, so I prepared to talk. Oh, here we go. Go yep. into Dave's office, say it, what I needed to say, and said, okay, you know. And then, as we, as I'm processing it, it's like, okay, well, okay, I got to be professional. And then that's when tank the, the the I went in the tank really, and you I did. went in that office, and I was like, well. All the things that we were going to discuss, because I'm literally on the fo- I was on the phone with Barry, <laughs> talking about some things we were going to discuss about when he got there. So like, okay, so I gotta start noting everything down. So I'm fearlessly just writing everything. So because if I forget anything, I will never forgive myself. So you ran writing, away from that meeting. And I was like, no, we didn't see yeah, him for like a day and a half. I he's have just frantically to get writing everything. Not only did I thought down anything I was going to ask him about, anything that, any suggestions, all the things down just to get it, just to get my foundation on like version point one of the rules. Because if you right. forgot a conversation, it was gone forever. Right. So there was no asking him I, again. Yeah. And half of it was in your head. <laughs> we got a question, Jen. Yeah. Oh, there were going to be something I was going to suggest about um, certain rules as far as uh, um, certain shots that we'll get into later, you know, yeah. but it was going to be like basically it was going to be like version 0.1 and then me coming to the Oracle, Barry, for permission to do these things because I was going to defer to the designer, of course. So it was going to be those discussions uh, building on what we had discussed in his study in San Antonio on those meetings and things. So it was things like that, like, okay, are we going to have increasing ramps? Are we going to, like, of, of increasing shot per, for repeating? Are we going to have uh, certain concepts that may have happened at Voldemort? Are we going to do some, a couple of those things and try that? You know, things like that, and, you know. And, and, uh... She's loud enough. It's She's all loud good. enough. Loud enough. Uh, I, oh, it's cool. I mean, I can... Damn, I love you. Yeah. Um... <laughs> We, we should ask her a newly husband. Like, I think it's really, like, what I find interesting is when you're talking about that conversation is, like, I guess where, and I'm sorry to derail if you were talking about something, but. You're like, actually not derailing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. In the moment of, you know, when you're talking to him, like, that's what I find fascinating of, like, what was your thought process of, like, this is what I need to ask now to be able to make sure we have what we need to do later. You know, if, if well, I mean, you think you're going to be able to talk to him tomorrow. I thought right. I was going to be able to talk you to him. You think you're going to be able to ask him the same question in a week because yeah. you forgot the answer. But, like, but to Jen, to that point, let me point out one thing. Steve and Barry have been good friends for a long period of time. Worked on how many different rule sets for games at Voldemort? Oh, boy. There's so many unpublished ones. Yes. And, and they had already had these conversations and mm-hmm. talked about them in great detail and spent time. Not only that, Steve also showed Barry the ending to a game that he never saw. I love that. Right. That was it was his design. He actually finished Junkyard. That was at his house, right? At his that house. was at that was on one of the yeah. meetings where we were retired to the study. Like before that meeting, we, right. I had dinner with his family. And it was awesome because Barry was cooking up whatever because he is the man with the, you know, cooking up. And we, we ate. And then before we retired to the study, I played his very mint condition junkyard and got to outer space and beat it. And the family watched it. And then Barry said he had never seen that before because he had already he left in the game before that was in there. <laughs> and so... That that is a reason why Junkyard is mentioned in Mario's game. So, so that is re- that is the reason why that was brought over because I was like, I just showed him what something he never saw. This is his game, you know. So it also made me very because I didn't know at the time that I was like doing. I was just oh, I'm just beating outer space again. Cool, this is fine. You know, I can do this. Um, and meanwhile, the entire family is in shock and awe, watching you do this. And Barry goes, "What in the what is going what on? What was here? that? I've you also know. never seen it. I'm not that good." <laughs> but understand, there was a there was a true bond already there, and um, there was something in your bag that showed you. Oh, a true you want bond. to get into that now? Okay, let's get into sure. that now. Okay, yeah. Before we get into we got know, handouts. Before we yeah, before we get into uh, you know, the rules and how this became yeah. Barry's game. Let me show a reason why. Okay. All right. Here. 
And understand, Barry was a was <laughs> probably the quietest man, but once he knew you, he got really he he really opened up. Yeah. So one thing Barry did to the people he Barry did to the people he trusted is he took him to the gun range. Okay. And me, who had uh, up to that point had not fired a gun before, Barry trusted me with his guns and his weapons, and he taught me how to load and everything, and he took me to the gun range. You know, Barry, you know, like the right, the creator of Dirty Harry's rule set. So, you know, <laughs> Dirty Barry, okay? <laughs> Dirty <Yeah>. Barry, <laughs> all right? So, so here's, my, here's my journey into, you know, this is, this is how it started, right? So, Hey, you hit the target. I hit the targets a lot. The guy's dead. And yeah. so <laughs> that's how it started. So you know, he and meanwhile he's showing me how to load with his you know, his guns, showing me how to aim and everything. And so, and I'm having fun with Barry. We're just hanging out and all that stuff. So I still don't want to stand in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> so we move we move the target well, further fact, down. Better, they if they want, space. as long as no one, as long as out. no one damages my out. my <laughs> momentum my momento of Barry, you can take it if you want, but just it gotta come back to you, please. Right. So then we moved the target down, and things got a little bit better. A little better. Like, he's off to the side a little bit, but... Giving you some now, instruction. Some instruction, and so now the target's further down in the range, right? And so now, you know, Barry challenges me. And he's giving you some instruction. To another <laughs> one further down the range, and I get a little better. A lot better, actually. So I feel a little better about this. And then, before we left... Before he leaves. By the time he was done with you. This was yes. the last one. And we got to here. So, right? <laughs> yes. So, this was the end of the day, <laughs> right? So, if you understand, it's, so as far as the journey between this and this. <laughs> and that's farther away. This is farther away as well. This is, oh. they're moving it several meters down each time. So, just, just to... Uh, who hammer on the point on the bond that Barry and I had. I mean, also, you know, one of the reasons why this game became Barrio's barbecue challenge is because Barry liked to go to barbecue places. And you had better be ready when he was ready to go, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. Don't be. <laughs> okay. Barry ready to go at a certain time. It was 11, probably like 11.30 a.m. You ready to go to lunch with Barry? Okay, let's go. And he would take you to one of the many barbecue places that were available in San Antonio. And so that's why uh, this barbecue theme is not random. It's not, oh, it's a random theme in made about barbecue. No. Okay. <laughs> that's one reason why it is. Okay. So now to get back to the story, I'm in the tank in the office. Um, I have stopped pretending to be a salesman. And now I am furiously writing everything that I could remember about what I was going to ask Barry, what my initial plan was going to be to propose to him. And while I'm doing that and writing things and thinking of ideas, I'm thinking, well, okay, is there a way that I can better pay tribute to Barry and his memory? And that's when, when I started writing the rules, things started to change a bit. It became a bit of a challenge to me to see how many other Barry games could I squeeze into this game? And have it still make sense. You know, it still got to make sense. So that became my little challenge to myself as I started trying to trying to write the rules. Now, I, originally, the rules were very disorganized. I, I think in one of the first original meetings, there were rules from three different games in this game. And they were like, because it was like, what is it going to be car hop? Is it going to be bar? Is it going to be a bar? Oh, it's a barbecue theme. Okay. Yeah. When it became Barry's game, then I was able yeah, to sort of meld them, the three into one coherent rule set. Yeah, because the first thing we decided was just that it was going to be a Barry tribute game. We didn't know necessarily when we started having the meetings that it was going to be barbecue. It was going to just be like we just said, all right, we're got it's we're going to make Barry's game. What else can we do with it? And so we, we well, had a couple of days worth of meetings trying to figure out exactly so, what that would mean. So one of the things Barry and I had talked about was when we were going to call it a barbecue game. We were gonna leave the name on the top blank, so they could go to like Joe. Joe could put his name up there and say it's Joe's barbecue, right, on this location, or it's Alex's barbecue. But it was that meeting, like the day after. You know, we made the announcement, we wrote out the nice thing, um, 
uh, the next day we were all in the meeting and it, it basically came across across from everybody. I think Jack Hager basically said it, just call it Barry O's Barbecue. And it rang so true. And we were like, okay, that's it. All right, well, this is, I should skip the mini Go ahead, David. Thing. Yes, it was going to be Steve Bowden. Yeah. Yeah. But then it became, um, but but the 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 team, and I'm glad Joe is here. Where is Joe? He's right oh, over there. God. There's yeah. your, there's the one. Thank, him thank God for Joe and Casey. Casey's not yes. here. Casey's asleep. He should be asleep. He's worked very you hard. You told him yes. to go to bed, so he bet. But did. Joe Shover, but he never there. listens. He's probably he doesn't you know, listen. No, no. You, you know what? He's probably online. Oh, he's he didn't invite me. He's in trouble. It's easy. You either have to rave or he's watching us right now, and we can just look into these cameras and say, you know, Casey, go to bed. Right. He's but he text me all the stupid things I said. So. But I am I am very glad that Joe is here because you know, let's just, from coming from a person who was clearly the third coder on Galactic Tank Force. Okay, I was the third man. Okay, so I knowing how hard it is to do that type of of. Uh, to code the game, you know, I'm very um, happy to have people like Joe and Casey on oh, yeah. the team who are helping us even now, you know, uh, to make the game better and uh, have helped this vision come to life and helped it be a very fun game for everyone. I mean, one thing, I mean, I might as well say this now because I just have to get this off my chest right now because this is, this is, you're getting a lot more people who are coming up to me and they're saying, you know, I really like Barry O's Barbecue Challenge. It's really a good game. I really like it. I don't get why all the other talk about it. I like it. I like so. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, we go. What, and then I go and get into what do you like? What do you didn't like? You know, tell me. Give me all the criticism. Give me all everything because I want to be able to learn and and talk about pinball and whatever. And then you know, um, even uh, all this. This happened uh, a couple of days ago when. Uh, That's when you were telling me about it, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, like, yeah, you uh, yeah, <laughs> told me about the translation of us, one of those who liked uh, Barry Oski. You know, I was like, okay, well, um, one thing I, I, I do tell people now is I say, thank you very much for telling me, but humbly, could you please say that publicly? Yeah. Let Be people know they're allowed to like it. Let people know that they're allowed to like Barry's game. Yep. Because I've certainly, you know, heard it from not the others. I mean, it's not it's not for my ego. I don't need that. I mean, it's just I want to hear both positive and negative. And so I'm certainly seen, you know, n negatives like, oh, one pinball pundit said it was Hot Wheels. And I'm like, wait, what? Mm. I've got so many pages of rules that says this game is not Hot Wheels. And we have Hot Wheels here at the show. And we have Barry's game here. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it's not Hot Wheels. I mean, maybe you would have got closer if you said it was Oktoberfest, because this game is a festival. Because this Barrios Barbecue Challenge is a festival. So maybe you would have got closer to it. Well, I mean, Another before... comment I heard is that, oh, this game is just a filler game. Imagine having your work reduced to that, saying, oh, this is just a filler game. Right? <laughs> So well, I mean that's I tell people please we, we dealt with even worse than you that. know what? we had unfounded rumors when the game first came out that we actually had to address because people had the audacity to claim that it wasn't even Barry's design. Yep, they had no basis for saying this, but they would publicly just to get clicks say, "Oh yeah, Barry didn't even design it," and we're like, "We can literally show you his signed." design right and meanwhile why I'm, would you say that i'm like someone? wait so were you there in the meetings in the study with us in san antonio were you there did you bug the room i don't understand like how what do you not know were, were they on the teams meeting i know yeah were they on a hidden teams meeting there yeah, so no. that so no so that's just something i had to get off my chest now because it was really it's really bothering me but <laughs> i really appreciate those people who come up and mm -hmm. give that encouragement and and also say you know say you know I really have fun. I really had fun with it and I said oh thank you very much let's talk about it tell me what you like give me something that you didn't like as well because that helps mm -hmm. me to learn right in this 
you know, journey. I mean, because really, when when we heard the news from Barry, after I went in the tank and wrote all this stuff and tried to do all this disorganized stuff, and we had our meetings where the rule set was in three different pieces and everything, and all of a sudden I come to the realization, I'm like, and you have that oh crap moment. It's like oh crap, I'm de facto game designer now. I'm gonna need a lot of help. <laughs> okay, so I mean, because because the inspiration who was gonna lead me into this journey to be a game designer is no longer here. So I think that was the meeting I walked into was yeah. you you in Dennis's office being like, I just realized I'm the game right. designer. Please right. help. Right. <laughs> so I have to be the surrogate to, to bring this across the finish line. And so but luckily American Pinball and the team was fully behind it. And so I you know I thank them internally every day. I should thank you more out loud more often. But you know, I, I try to make a point of that these days. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I let me ask you a question, Steve. Do you, do you find that people say they like it after they finally played it? That's generally t- t- that's generally what happens, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what happens in many hobby hobbyist things. So, so video games, pinball. It, yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna go out on I'm gonna let them take a second here, yeah. but I'm just gonna go out because I've I've seen this as a, a trend. Um. There's a lot of people out there who like they were talking about clicks and likes and opinions, and trust me, that's fine. I, I, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion and so forth. But I will tell you, I've heard of some people who have now spent an hour, two hours on a game and give me a review. Now I'll listen to that. I am happy to listen to a two-hour review that they've pl- or a review that they played a game for two hours. I don't care for reviews when the person's just going off of pictures and just watching it and making their own assumptions. Got to be in there. Got to be there and play it. I mean, that's that's the only way, true way to give it credence. I know I'm probably going to be slammed on pin side and all the rest of them and all this segment may be clipped out and put on somebody's podcast, but I don't care. As a As a collector of 150 games, I know what I like to play. I know what feels good, and you know what? It, all of us have games that we absolutely love, and we have friends that have games that they love, and some of them we don't like. You know, it's 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 the way it goes. But give it a shot, play it, make your own decision, mm-hmm. make your own your own thing. And if you like it, let the world know. Mm-hmm. If you don't I like mean, it, let the world know. To but that you point, it, do you remember what I said when I first played it? I didn't like it. Right. Hmm? I said in the lab when we first built this, I was like, I don't like it that much. We got we got a little bit of work to do. Yep. Um, well, and then I played it for three more hours, and I changed my mind because well, I got better. <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh, the answer is play better. That's why I don't <laughs> like it. Okay. Yes. Once after I had two hours on it, I'm like, okay, we still need to move a few things. But yeah, we need to work on. That. I was wrong. I'm we, sorry. We need to work on some things. <laughs> yes, but it's right. So to that point about play the game, presenting the eleven, almost twelve, other games, other Barry games that are shouted out in Barrio's Barbecue Challenge. This used to be a trivia game, but we're too yeah, tired. Yeah, I'm too tired. Mind. I'm not gonna do it. That <laughs> Um, what? Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I, yeah. I'm still on Easter. I had it where like you, I would I blanked it out and I I would show the clue and then you and he guess has which one it was. But that's another story. But um, we can we can point out I can point out you know space Go shuttle right here's the shuttle sitting in here chilling out here. That's the sauce shuttle. Right, there. it's the sauce shuttle. That is that's the sauce. right. <laughs> Uh, and also, um, you know, with the, the saw show here, this is Sierra Sue, our astronaut, who is an astronaut for a reason. Um, so space shuttle, space station, space station. We have the stop and score for space station, which is also in space shuttle. One thing about the stop and score is that space in space shuttle, people used it because it was a big feature. Uh-huh. Barry and I noticed that in space station, people didn't use it as much. It's because that ramp was harder to hit. True. I, also, I own one. I actually bought one to restore while we were doing this to try to learn more about Barry's work. Um, and actually, that's that's a ridiculous thing. I got handed a 3D printed space station mod today 
<laughs> that a friend of mine had said they were going to make for me over a year and a half ago. I was setting up the booth and I turn around, it just gets shoved into my hand, the space station. I'm like, oh my God, this is gorgeous. And I remembered all of that, but that was literally today. So uh, there's no point of that story. I don't right. know. Yeah, I, I was like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm a goldfish and that's just what happens. It's Thank the, you. The go home yeah. show. Remember, okay. Yeah, the go home uh, show. So we have space shuttle, space station, uh, Phoenix, the Iron Phoenix. The name of the grill is the Iron Phoenix, and also Phoenix also has these targets right here in the bumper garden. So that's why these are here. We have Barracora. Oh, the I lo- yeah, the grill fix targets. Yeah, um, <laughs> Barracora. Love this. See now, now, remember in the first picture there was one row of four. Now there's two rows of four. So that we can do Barracora, but a little harder. Remember Barracora, you have to have one lit before you get the other one. So it plays like Barracora, but in reverse. It melts my brain. Okay. Until I told you, just think of Connect Four, and then you were okay. That helped. That helped. <laughs> well, I remember you were really happy about that because you told me, Ryan, I like it because it make because it fries my brain. Right. Like, I can't do it. He that's, can't that's do it. Like He's it. like, I can't do it, so I like it. Right. I'm, I'll, I have to learn it. So I get I have better. To learn. In this game, this has helped me get better at Barracora, too, even though it's reversed. So, and then we have a fire with the fire lanes, the fire hurry up here, and also save my baby back ribs. Right, Dave? I'm that's really right. proud of that one. Uh, save Shout my out to Frank baby. Shepard. <laughs> that's in the game. All right. And then we have Doctor Who with the Playfield X ramp right here. Right, and and it does go up and down like Doctor Who, but also there are other rules that are Doctor Who like. Like there's a way to make you to allow you to go up the playfield X two steps instead of one like yep. Doctor Who. That's the hard Barracora, right? Right. Yeah. Is that boss or chef? I always that's forget. That's boss. Boss. Yes. All right. right. And, boss and makes then, you a boss. And there's also one that allows you to complete the barbecue pit targets faster by you hit one target and you get credit for two. That's Doctor One. Right, uh, the the skip up the playful X is Doctor Six, right on Doctor Who, uh, and then Jackpot, which I can't show you here, but I can show you. I wonder if I can show you because I did download the this video. I wonder if it's here. All right. This is one of the videos that's on on the site. That's listing the saucy secrets here. Who's that right. handsome guy? Who's that guy? Yeah, I'm paying no attention to him. He's, you know, what's he doing? Uh, where is the? I think deal? it's Steve. It might be me. It's okay, somewhere. Good. Yeah. So- I have a beard there somewhere for some reason. <laughs> where where is Jackpot? But anyway, on uh, uh I'll go back to here. So uh, Jack- Jackpot is here because Jackpot is one of my favorite multiballs. It may be my most favorite multiball because it's just like the Joker's Wild Game Show. Well, no, no, the, uh, no, no, the Kiss of the Joker's Wild Game Show. Uh, the Jackpot multiball, I like it because of its, its progression up the ladder. And so Barrio's Barbecue Challenge has a progression up the ladder, and it uses the same, the same format. The only difference is where Jackpot, you start with 50 million. This game, you start with whatever number you want. So it can get kind of crazy. And then you take it to space. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, you know, like space shuttle. <laughs> I remember laughing when you when you were like, "Oh, look, it's a ladder." And I'm like, "What do you mean? My grill is literally taking off into space. Right. Where's the, I'm not climbing a ladder, sir. Right. You just you're climbing the ladder of points. Sure. Orbit. That's right. Where I'm headed. <laughs> right. We've so, been telling you that for a long time. Uh, okay. So, uh, and when we have junkyard where we bring in our fireworks, yeah. right? Especially for Barry and his fireworks hijinks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys know about the oh. hijinks he did at Williams? Some of you? No? He was the reason was, I wanted to meet him the most. He, he was famous. He, understand, Barry was a very quiet demeanor, kind of just like, oh, did somebody do that? You know, I kind of oh, he, no. he he oh no that's that's shocking. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's two o'clock at Williams any given day. Designer came back from lunch. He might be sitting at his desk working on something, and he's just not enough. And meanwhile, Barry's running down the hallway, sticking bottle rockets under their door, lighting them so they go flying into the office and exploding, knocking, just scaring the the designer out of his chair, waking him up. And then they come running out and and you know they go down to Barry's office and Barry says, "What was that noise? 
What's going on? <laughs> Goals. <laughs> yeah. You know, what a Perfect. legend. You know, don't play poker against the man is what I kept coming up to the conclusion. And Ken Fidesna found out it was Barry who was doing it because he said, you know, Barry, whoever's doing this, they need to put a little tinfoil down. So they stopped trying to get the rug on fire. The next time there was tinfoil down or aluminum <laughs> foil down. So he was like, I only told one person. Uh, so that's how we knew it. I haven't put bottle rockets under David's door yet. It's a glass door. I would but see you coming. It's <laughs> classic, so I can do this. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's all right. So that's why fireworks frenzy exists in Mario's <laughs> barbecue. Challenge. I was really happy when I saw that go in. Uh, was, uh, yes. Those the the fireworks come off the like probably Dennis was responsible for the main changes when it comes to getting this the yep. Drop targets where they belonged, the the orbits feeling right, and the the especially the the multi ball start scoot uh, lane being that small but still feeling really nice. Um, but like I said, there was one meeting I walked into. It was the one where you and Dennis were like having you you had that realization. Oh crap! I'm the game designer now. I know the most. I need I need backup. Right. Um. And they were they were sitting in front of a a big grid of the game and they were trying to figure out how they were gonna like spread it out. And we noticed, we're like, all right, well, we only have, like, really seven major shots to work with when it comes to rules. But two of them are lo- – three of them are locks. So what are mm-hmm. we going to do when one player locks one of those? It's a saucer. It's like if, and if you're playing a mouse and around and someone else puts one on the saucer, like – you're, you're locked out. You're kind of you're kind of in trouble. you gotta, you got to figure out how to do it. And, like, Doctor Who, you're, you're, you're in – Big trouble. Yeah, big trouble because you got to hit the center. You got to hit the center what huge. six times or something. You got to hit the center. You, you got to hit the center. You just don't even go yeah, for it. It's not good. Um, well, and even spatial too. Yeah, well, spatial. Well, spatial is a full lock steal. Yes. That's yeah, I, I prefer that honestly right. to, yeah. to the Doctor Who where some player one just drop two in the locks and then just leave them there. <laughs> just don't even let your opponent do it. <laughs> Take your multi ball on ball three and just screw them out of it. But so I was like, wait a minute. Just I, I was hit with sudden inspiration. I was like, we could fix that. And they were like, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, if you just make it in a certain shape, you can you can just hit those balls while they're in there, and we can tell. <laughs> that then like Steve kind of knew where I was coming from from the beginning. I, Dennis was like, what what do you mean? There's a ball in there. We can't do that. And at this point, David had listened to the whole conversation. He's like, Ryan, you're wasting your time. Just no, go build no, it. I did, no, I, I, yeah, I said, you're wasting your time yeah. trying to explain it. Dennis, yeah, exactly. You're wasting your time I trying said, to tell it. I Dennis, understand what you're saying. Just go build it and go show him. Change. And I was like, yeah. all right, cool. So I went and out back and I grabbed a Hot Wheels white wood because we have like 13 of them. Um, I went after I gave away three to tournaments. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the closest one that had, you know, an existing um, saucer on it. Um, and I just cut it with tools into a little teardrop Yep. and I, I set it all up and I set the switch up and I just brought it into Dennis's office and I'm look, I just look at this. If I hit this, this ball will come off the switch for a minute, just a second. And then it goes right back down. There's not enough room for the other ball to get in there, but Casey and Joe are smart and they can say, all right, this one is held down and we lost it for a second. They can score that. And he was like, oh. And Steve, and then, cause I'm like, he, I'm like, you cool. wanted to hug me. I'm like, fir- first, I want, <laughs> first I'd want, because I'm like, oh, wait, I got my shots back. I can put rules on it. Uh-huh. But then I'm like, wait a minute. Let's check the whole shaking test. So let's shake. Oh, the yeah. Then they, they put it through the yeah, ringer to make sure it wasn't a slide out. This. So this uh, was probably the earliest instance of me saying, Steve, tell me this is stupid. Yeah. I do this all the time. I call I call Steve, David, whoever in my office, and I'm like, I need you to look at what I just spent two hours on. I need you to tell me it's stupid so I don't spend two days on it. And most not so far, most of the time. So so far, so far, <laughs> there's been a couple. There's you, been a couple. They're like, not, mostly, Ryan, what what's wrong with you? Not, no, yeah, yeah, you, no. You, you, you've gone to the edge on a couple occasions. I have. We, 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 we. That's fine. <laughs> but once the bash logs pass my shake test. Mm past the tournament shaking you know okay i can't shake these locks or anything i'm like okay i'm all in now because i got my shots back yeah (laughs) they're like it's not stupid go make go make a better one it didn't take you 20 minutes (laughs) so uh we ended up eventually dennis and i fine-tuned the um the shape of them so that they would 
like only move a certain amount and yep. like we, we had a lot of trouble making them not reject because if you give them a longer runway that's normally how you keep a, a, a ball in a saucer better is you give it a longer runway you do a little divot or whatever but if you if you want to not be able to put a second ball in there you're limited to half an inch can't go any farther than that because if you can there's room for a second ball to get stuck in there so we were stuck with a half an inch and that was all we had to work with but we figured out just a nice clean teardrop with a half or a quarter inch shelf would accept a ball and it wouldn't let a new one in there and so once once dennis and i were both happy with it it made it into the next whitewood and then the next thing I knew, I was being taught by Steve what a firework was. <laughs> Cause I had and never, why we have it. Right? And why we have it. And I'm like, oh. So I'm like, yes, I can get the fireworks <laughs> back in that I want, you know, so I can bring so I can bring junkyard in, in the, into the game. Uh, so also we have Comet and Cyclone I'm counting as one item because uh, it used the concepts of both games kind of in a minor way, but not hurry, enough to stand hurry. on their own. Yeah, hurry, hurry, Step hurry, right hurry. up. And Love is that is that <laughs> is that you have the left rat recipe in, increasing value here, and also the the top lanes in uh, Comet. There's four of them, and if you drop them in each one, it increases your play field X on Comet. Uh, so one of the power ups. That's the for like thirty seconds, right? It's like yeah. double scoring thirty not, seconds. Not that. Now the first one for boss is the right ramp power up. Yeah. So that's what makes the play field X faster to increase. So that's how that link happens there is also additional power up called the play field x time expander which allows that play field x to last even longer so you could have a 60 second play field x if you yeah. want if you if you work hard enough i remember spending an entire summer trying once i figured out how the cyclone doubler worked i spent an entire summer trying to double the four million jackpot not right. knowing that was exempt right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i finally got it and i'm like yes wait a minute no, oh. no, no. Only got four million. <laughs> nope. It's like, but not Waste, here. You just wasted three. It's months. not exempt <laughs> here, though. It's not exempt here. <laughs> I didn't work there. I was paying quarters for that. <laughs> that was the Salem Willows, where the right ramp was impossible. Uh, a bit bar uh, before I finally have, got it. We uh, have Bram Stoker's Dracula. There is a mode called Equipment Malfunction, which functions similarly to the Bats Round in Dracula. But is what happens is when you power up your grills too much, your grills are overheating, so you have to hit the grills enough times to calm them down and score your hurry up bonus. Um, the ramps all the ramps also happen to be the ramps and the and the targets here also happen to be in the Dracula position, but the equipment malfunction hurry up really hammers that game in. All right. Um, Harley Davidson, there is a, well, not only on the, it's kind of hard to see, but on the slingshot plastics, we have Barry riding his cycle. We have the ha pig hog. riding his cycle. The hog riding. And also one of the power-ups in one of the modes is called live to ride, but not ride to live because that's copyrighted. So live to ride is one of the power-ups and one of the modes is a bike mode. So those are the 11 games. Whodunit is there in gray because I couldn't quite, the, the way the skill shot used to work is it used to move kind of like whodunits there and you had to time it that way. It's more fun the way it is now. So whodunit lost out. So that's why it is it is not 12, it is 11. So so the next time you get to play Barrio's Barbecue Challenge, see how many you can pick out. But but Steve, I'm going to point out one thing, and this is me going back with whodun whodunit. If you slip it into the basement on the first shot that's a super skill shot, it locks the ball. Right. That was this like this yeah. that's what this lock was supporting. If, that. If, yeah. If you do that, you it's still really can hard, lock can be done. that ball. I've done it, but it's right. not easy. So it does do it here, but again the tie is not strong enough to give it the full respect Correct. of being one of the games. So that is your trivia question for this game. <laughs> there it is. Roland, you got a question? Which which side the the right. left? The left oh side. right right so did so were you able to hit the ball by accident and get a firework in that case because yeah. to reward you for missing so that's what that's what I want I want a reward yeah. misses 
Now, hopefully you can combo that left ramp because that's what gets your recipe value up and gets your scores up. So A lot of work went into balancing that area because Dennis and I had to think, all right, we need this. We need both of these shots to feel good. We have to draw the line somewhere, and there's not – we have to put a post because we can't it, – it's, it's too sensitive in an area for, like, a thinner rubber. So every millimeter we gave the ramp – made the lock reject a lot more often. And so we ended up having to, we, we, we put it all the way as far away as we can to make the ramp like the most, the best experience we could. And then we just inched it over, over, over just a little, over a little more until they both felt as good as they could without detracting from it. And yeah, that was admittedly a very challenging, specifically that, that division between the left lock and the left ramp. Um, and we did a lot even more work because we, we redid that whole process after one day Steve came to us and said, like, we're we're only three months from release, guys, and this left ramp just isn't where it needs to be. It's not fun. It's not good. It's not aimed in the right spot. We got to redo it. And so I, like, all right. I have a team, like a team team meeting. Yeah, like, all all hands on deck hands emergency in. meeting. And mm-hmm. um, back then we were still in the, like, a lot of the play testers were playing the Whitewood and we were like, they they weren't having that portion of it. And then when Steve really just sat us down, it was like, guys, you need to redo this. Like you need to, I know you spent a lot of work fine tuning that post, but like think a little bit broader, think about that wall too. move the wall, change the curve of the wall, like just, just redo it instead of tweaking it. And so we said, all right, we'll do it. And uh, we spent three days in the lab, I think, trying to come up with like i i cut that ramp into a thousand yeah. pieces and i threw away three more of them and by the time we were done i was like all right steve how about this i was like now we have combos and the yes. ramp was Thank you. we prioritized <laughs> we the ramp combos. a little more yes. but we didn't feel like we lost too much out on the lock but we, it's not as easy to lock on the left as we wanted it to be um and it used to be a lot easier to get in there from the plunge too but we lost a little bit of that in that final tweak but the, as a result, the left ramp is a lot better to hit. Right. Um, and I it changed our play testers' minds too. They were like, after after that revision, they were like, you know what, this is this feels a lot better. So we think we did the right thing. Um, I still every time I play Barrios, I still think that the left lock is the easier lock. I think the right lock is the tougher lock. It is, yeah, the right lock is marginally tougher in my opinion. Yeah. Than the left one. Yeah, because every time I go for the, yeah. if I have it in the left. And I try to go for the right. I usually miss and go in and release the locks and mm-hmm. go into the two ball multi ball, which I don't want to be in. You want three ball. You yeah, want the three ball. So sometimes I try to go for the right. punishment. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you started multi ball. Poor oh, you. Oh, uh-huh. oh, oh no, you started a whole multi ball anyway. Yep. Uh, sp- special shout out to Jack Hager is what I'm sh- uh, zooming in here for the characters here. Uh, well, all, Jack, of, Jack is all one their, of the characters too. Yeah, all yeah. Jack is uh, yeah. Jack is Firehouse number nine. Yeah, Sergeant Star- Murphy. Sergeant, Sergeant Murphy, Murphy is Jack Hager. Yep. And so yeah, we had a, a few sessions of you know a, a call out call out sessions of you know what what are these what are these crazy characters gonna say? And so didn't we originally go down around to cities? Yeah, there yes. were cities there first. Were, there were cities. Yeah. Yep. Is it over here? No, I'll no, no, this show. Is not, yeah, this is not. This is here. Yeah. And and I assure you, people, I have some friends visiting me from home in New England. Uh, I assure you, when we had cities, I was insisting that roast beef and sauce be on there, but I lost. We were like, we got. I got sauce. It's just sauce, not yes. barbecue sauce, not anything else. Just sauce. That's a weird New England thing. Just ignore me. Is it James River sauce? It is. That is the secret. Uh, New England barbecue sauce is actually James River barbecue sauce, and it tastes nothing like any other one. There's the city's but, version. One yep, of them. Yep, there they are. See, I have, I have That's everything my dumpster. here. Yeah, this is – there's the city's version. Yes, there were 12 of them. We have – we – you know, I came to my senses is what the team knocked some sense at me and says 12 is too many because it is. <laughs> but, I mean, it was a clock. Yes, there were 12, and I was using this clock in other ways as well, in a hidden way. But, no, now it became six. Six makes more sense to human players. Okay. <laughs> And oh, human yeah. coders, right. I'm sure that yeah. Yes, I mean, so we get a big thumbs up from. Joe so Joe that Joe was right the there. city's version, and then we have the food version. 
All right. Right. Where because because it was a debate of whether it was going to be cities or 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 meat or it was going to be different types of meat or different type of cities. So were we were we going to go on a journey across the country or were we going uh, and take barbecue challenges in other cities or were we all going to come to the same place and cook different types of food? So the marriage happened where we had these crazy characters from different places around the theoretical country cooking their different foods. So that's where yeah, the and they all got together at a at a, at festival. a festival. Like they came right. from those cities to the big festival because Barry invited them. I right. Don't know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that's how that's how that worked out. So uh, like I said other information about the development is on Amer- AmericanPinball.com's YouTube channel. There was a video that that Dave and I did. There's a video that I did about the. Uh, about the secrets there will be an upcoming video that jessica is working on thank you jessica yes um who is going to be we're working on another video that will detail a little bit more about the, the strategies right again nothing too pedantic or whatever it's not not something that you can point to really quick oh how do i do the play flex oh click there's the play flex okay and you know, so that will also be coming pretty soon in the future because we, we we got a draft on that pretty recently and it looks pretty good you know, um, you know uh, your rule set uh, on barbecue was the first one that made me feel like a smart player so <laughs> i i'm that, dumb man. i'm real yeah thank you that's my best no friend. argument here um my best friend and my boss the first one's going to tell you how dumb i am uh i he's a goldfish folks <laughs> so think i know but i live for this don't ever stop <laughs> front row heckling <laughs> only please um but yep there it is it's gone Steve, <laughs> like we said, a goldfish. Round now, of applause. I'm for really this. bad at learning complicated. I, you don't know if I'm blonde. I might That's be. That's true. <laughs> He's I, got I'm artificial intelligence. Really bad at learning pinball rules. Just for men. That's what I'm beard. trying to say. I, I love shots. I love mechanics. I love angles, numbers. Here's a, width, pre- here's like, a preview of it. So I'm so bad at learning pinball rules that it was like the number one thing that held me back as a competitive player. Like I would have to spend weeks getting taught the same thing. I still remember being at the Southern New Hampshire Pinball Club for four nights in a row as Greg Bond tried to teach me about Christmas trees on Metallica because that's what he had to call them for my dumb little noodle to wrap around it. He's like, build a Christmas tree. Start on the shot, then hit your snake to get the trunk and hit the target to build the leaves and then the end it looks like a Christmas tree and you're done. And on the fourth night of being told that like I'm a fifth grader, I finally understood it and now I can play Metallica and then I kicked his butt. (laughs) (laughs) But when Steve went to teach me his rule set for the game, because I had been working on other projects after they like finished the the white wood and it became the arted wood. And then they started really we, we start really getting into programming the rules once they have the full the full play field with inserts that they can start programming. That's when you start really seeing the, the game come to life. And um, so I hadn't played it for two months since it had been a insertless Whitewood. I'm like, oh, my God, you guys are half done with the rules. All right. Teach them to me because I have not a clue what's going on. And in like. What, 20 minutes? 30 what, minutes? That long, yeah. I just looked at you and I was like, Steve, I get it. Because that's, oh that's when I knew Wait, I did an really? okay I job. Wait, this and that's it? And then I'm like, okay, oh, this, I'm this, like, this, this, this. And then he's like... If I can do it in a couple of sentences, then that's good. Like, if I have to, like, no go off into a tangent or whatever, I've failed. But it wasn't just that, because you, yeah. you only gave me, like, four things. You gave me four instructions that were clear as day. And then from that... I would like one I would take one more shot and then I would figure out the next thing and I'd figure out the next thing and it, the game would teach me from there. And from that folks, pinball for dummies was born. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be signing my book next year, don't worry. <laughs> well, so, no, sometimes those games are more fun. I mean, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, this is this is a preview. This is like, you know, draft one of it, you know, and you'll you'll hear my over enunciating voice over this as I try to talk very uh, very uh, organized and emphasize every word. Who like directed this? This, Jessica. Okay. Uh, so, so forget. So uh, enough of, of me cringing at my own voice. But I mean, with that uh, that notwithstanding, I think it's going to come out pretty well, and you'll be able to understand a few more of the rules. And just to show you that this game is kind of deep, but not really. Like I didn't want to be too deep because if it's too deep, it's disrespectful to Barry. 
Because Barry made quick games that were easy to learn and hard to master. So I can't come up with like War and Peace and have it be a Barry game. That I was Barry check game. on him. It was it was if Ryan can understand it, you're allowed to do it. Uh, <laughs> I wanted one more step, but we'll we'll take that. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, we we do miss. We have one thing we should give a shout out uh, to Mr. David Thiel. Oh my gosh. Who Dang. is? Um, when I heard he, he was on the project, I was like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> uh, he was a sound engineer, right? And he also helped us a little with the white wood too, because he was like, "You need more switches up in those pop bumpers. Mm-hmm. I need to put more sounds. I need to put more things." And, but I think some of the best sound callouts were from Mr. Schober over there, where he went <laughs> mild, <laughs> spicy. Some some of the first placeholder sound effects we had in the game were were Joe Schober, our programmer, who just he he wanted a call out, so he made one, and that's it. And that's what happens when a programmer is making a game or an Dry engineer is making a game. Left. Like and and I played it for the first time in the in the lab and I just heard the most amazing deadpan voice just go mild. I want it. I want it in And I just died I laughing. It. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. I, I want see. it to stay. And now I have <laughs> I've told the sound guy that I want Joe doing my my placeholder call outs. <laughs> But I don't know if I'm going to get it yet, but it was great. But David Thiel did an awesome job with all the tunes and then, of course, the different actors that we brought in. And uh, and, and, all, and also the, the other sounds like the, if you yeah. played a David Thiel game, like, you know what I mean? Like the sound families, the sound, the thing yeah. that give you hidden clues that just use sounds so that you don't have to look at the screen. But he's using sound to tell you things. So when I heard that, I'm like, OK, I can tell I can say, hey, hey, uh. Hey David, can you do that thing on Spider-Man with the lanes when you counted them, but you didn't have to say, you know, you just counted them using the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I know he's gonna know what that means. Absolutely. So, like, please do that. Cause I want to do that. So, yeah. So, so anyway, so that that's a preview of the uh, video that's gonna be coming up soon. It's gonna be posted on American Pinball. See, it's just it's just giving a uh, quick run through of some of the rules in a more detailed fashion than that that's not the secrets video it's just the more see this is the equipment malfunction one right uh and so and, yeah. and I, I have to give a shout out to casey because we put those plastics on the grills and then we got them to start doing the fire yeah that yeah that is we weren't going to yeah. have those um those circuit boards with from gtf in there and then we yeah were those like, were on the chopping block weren't like, they yeah they were on the top like, of i can't remember i kept begging for those like please people love the gtf lights on those with, for so meltdown we them on there and it was like and then casey's like let me program them i'm gonna do these this light show where they look like they're on fire and flames and uh after that i was like okay they're in we'll just that, we'll, i was against we'll, them i was like rip them out we don't need them because I, right. I didn't really like them but for this that, theme like 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 they were implemented in tank force with right. the ring filling up and then he did this and i'm like i changed my mind i will fight to the death for these yes they yeah. must stay well i remember we had like a piece <laughs> of clear acrylic and we we tried a couple different different things and then we used the frosted which really gave the flame effect yeah. and uh, and those yeah. were gtf parts we just yes. had those yep absolutely so call out a uh, good shout out to Mr. Casey Butler for putting some stuff together on that. Absolutely. And we can't also forget that Dennis had brought in a new um, scoring post at in this game with those two on the, which were became the mild and the sauce or the spicy, uh, which were 360 degrees that could be hit from either side. So that was a pretty cool little new toy that we brought in for this game as well. All right, so that's it. So you'll see that posted later. So that was just the original draft. So you saw that as a treat. As a treat. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, if you're ever confused about the rules, first of all, I'm sorry. That means I failed somewhere. Because I don't want you to be confused. If I can do I it, you, you can do it. Go it. And play and have fun. So that's not okay. But if you really want to go in depth, you know, please go to AmericanPimple.com and. Uh, next, uh, in the near future, when this video will be posted up officially, you'll know, be able to. Uh, to play it and uh thank you for playing and enjoying it yeah I, mean, I don't and, know what else you guys want to say but and I, last weekend was it in california that this got into the finals and uh, the couple of players really got up to three billion points billionaires yeah, yeah billionaires yeah, right yeah. out of that on the finals so let's open it up to a few questions we have a little time do we have a little time martin okay so we have a little time and you know th- th- let's open it up there guys so 
Um, any questions? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Let's get the mic so that we everybody can hear it. I know you have a loud voice. So. All tired and quiet. I can hear yes. everybody. <laughs> it, I'd love it if you have something special that uh, you get if you activate all 11 secrets. It doesn't have to score points or anything to unbalance the scoring, but just something special. Okay, Ryan. Interesting. Do you remember that? Oh, I was waving by. Oh, I saw you. I was just waving by to Emily. That's all. <laughs> yes. I don't have a question. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Ryan, you can go to the bathroom now. <laughs> Thanks. It was like that. No, that was that's that a pretty good suggestion is duly noted. And... Yes. Hmm. Okay. Might be a new wizard. Hmm. <laughs> he's got secret bonuses all over the place. So oh yes, he's got Very that amazing so. space shuttle um, grid in the bottom, so he can spell Barry in the track mode. And he's also doing tic tac toe. So if you do them all in a row, you're getting extra bonuses. Like, yeah, finding places to hide bonuses is in this game is his specialty. So he'll figure it out if it can be done gracefully. I mean, if it makes gracefully. sense, it's gotta be. Yeah, it has to be. It has to make sense. Be It'd be crazy. graceful, but. I remember, I remember Steve and I were talking about that. He was like, "I'm gonna put this grid," and I said, "Why don't you copy space? You know, bring it up to the same like amount." Five, yeah, yeah, but like space shuttle, so we can put the numbers in. So I'm like, "Can we do that, please? I really would like that. It's space shuttle, yeah, because it, it was three, you right? Because I'm like, well, can we do that, please? You know, and, and then, then we, we like, oh, we already have a five LED board. Just use three of them, right? right. And then it ended up being its own board because that just been was better for Casey and everything. And then we were able also to spell out Barry. Yeah. So in the middle there. And, and whatever we want, because now you can use numbers in there. So the the, the countdown's in there. Oh, Show us. Oh, just, hey. this, this is not going to be a good question. Hold on. Right. Hold on. Sorry. Let's hear you. Boop, boop. Just yeah. for a fun bit of trivia, when I first coded that Attract Light Show, originally I wanted it to spell Barry O's BBQ Challenge. Uh -oh. yeah, the and... <laughs> I coded it up and I'm staring at it. It's like, that's too many letters. It's like, because you can only do one letter at a time in a five by three. How long did it take like, to spell that out? Yeah, yeah this yeah, is like a legend. Stare at it for so, a full 40 seconds to figure out what it said. Yeah, it was just not legible. <laughs> it, would, it looked just dumb. So now it's just Barry, Barry, Barry. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. And then we also brought our first uh, in play field. And that's kind of a cool thing. It's the player score screen in the middle. That's your screen. You don't have to look up at the at the uh, at the screen at the back of the box. You get to see what your next shots are. You get to see what you want to hit. This is kind of Steve really wanting to it's, inform you what you're going to do. Yeah, this is kind of just some initial stuff on what I wanted to happen with the screen. This is just me doing stuff like you know how are we going to show the jackpots? What are we going to show in there? That will help you. That is not because so it's not mirroring. So it's like you can just look down there and find almost as much information as you can get up onto the main screen. So uh, make sure you utilize that mini screen. It is there to help you, and I hope it does help you. I remember there was a like a month where every single day I went into the lab, that screen looked different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It never had the same thing on it twice, and I'm like, oh, they are they are trying stuff out. Okay, I'm not gonna even bother trying to figure it out until Steve tells me it's actually the rules. And and it's but, a completely separate feed. Yeah. It's not copying. But I loved where you landed on it. I love the status thing, yep. and it's uh, I love my, one of my favorite things in the game because it was the first thing that clicked that made me feel like I wasn't a dummy. Was was figuring out the five star recipe and getting right. paid for yep. for holding off. And like getting all the sauce and getting the the, the spice level correct and These, like yeah like now once you, I got my now first you go for it trophy, every like, time yeah I, I go for it every single time because you can get paid I mean you know yeah. it's meant to pay off risk I mean I've seen what's your largest cash in my like best 350, was six hundred I had a six hundred million I got a I I didn't get a full a full playfield X like my my right ramp was not completed yeah. but I was too light short and got a platinum right. Yep. So, and I was not perfect, but I was I was going for perfect because I love that part. Of right. It. So, I mean, because when you're at the festival, you're trying to yeah. present the perfect recipe to the judges. That's the lore, okay? Yeah. Correct. And so that's what these these five stars represent. So the more you press this, the more you risk. I mean, because you could mess up and drain before you do any of this, and then your game's over and you didn't do it. Or you could do like Ryan did and do like the first three meals at 300 million. 
And we're like, okay, we can't come back. Yes, you can. Pitmaster Multiball is there for oh, you. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> you, you, you were can. there. You were there the day I had the full perfect one ready. Yeah. And I died. He died. He died on it. <laughs> yeah. He was ready. He made I, the shot. Was, and he, he I, ran, I left the room. Shot. I you know? left the room. I quit the game. <laughs> I'm going to say also playing against these guys is not fun sometimes. Um, David likes to kick me. You know, yeah. Well, I remember there's a stream. Um, Huh? Oh, I'll be a, I'll be the leader of that one. <laughs> we'll um, that. No, I remember uh, we were on a stream. It was uh, it was Ray into it. and me versus Steve. We were doing a team challenge, Perfect. and we had like put a billion points up, and B- Bowden was at twenty million. There it is. There's the ladder. There's and the ladder. Uh, of course, Steve is famous for one ball just coming out of nowhere and crushing all our scores and going right to three billion. So it can be. I'm going to ask you guys a question because this came up before. We know this game is designed not to allow you to steal the locks. But we've had some people ask us, could we turn a setting and make it lock steal? So do you all like lock stealing? Do you guys like lock stealing? You want it? You guys want it in there? We'll add it if you like it. Yeah, we've been talking I mean, about it. We've asked this question. Right, just to be fair, who hates yes. lock and stealing? The answer has been yes. Anyone hate lock stealing? Okay, y'all just other than, other just than tournament it. players. So I just wanted to know which one where we're other going. Other than tournament players. <laughs> we don't care what the tournament players want. We're two tournament players, and we don't care what we want. And and understand that you know we designed it so you a tournament player could play this, and you can't steal the locks. And it was pretty cool that we had the software to do that. Whereas you didn't have that back in the day when the Space Shuttle came out. But Meanwhile, I'll just wait till my game. My game laughs at tournament players. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's spoiler. Keeping, he's spoiler. Keeping, okay, don't worry about it. Spoiler. Sorry. Spoilers. Okay. Right. Um, any other questions? No. Hooray. Oh, any, wait, anybody more. awake? End question. If this isn't a heckle, you're fired. Closer? You got the closer. Okay, Sam. I don't think I need to answer that. <laughs> I was downstairs in the Sonic onesie an hour ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Steven. Press your, your luck. luck. There's a thing with pass spins that I can't get by in my draft of the rules. I mean, once I can get past that, I mean, one thing about Press Your Luck is, is pa- passing the spins is one of the most important things of the show. And that telltale sound bang, that says you are now in trouble. But it is, it's, I just can't quite get past the logic, but I want to do Press Your Luck. I mean, it's the whammy show. It's the greatest thing. It's, <laughs> I mean, I, sometimes I'll go, I'll, I'll go on YouTube and I'll find the Press Your Luck spin battle. Just so I can feel good about myself to see someone lose thirty-five thousand dollars after they just battled somebody back and forth for ten minutes on this same one spin, <laughs> and it's like a thirty-year-old video. I don't know how long, but yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's that. That's it. And I think that I, I think it. one of the best days when I showed Steve that there was a pressure luck arcade game that my old company made, and he's like, I want this. I want to know. I want this in my house. Is I it think. the whole board? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's a board. I want the whole board. Yes. Is it I all see the squares? Leaving your pocket. Like, do they not have the Michael Larson pattern in it? I mean, you know, I don't mean, it's very, you don't have yeah. that. So, yeah, that's it. It's press your luck. And the old press your luck, right? Not the whammy, because they, the old one, the Peter to market one, or the new one. You know, that's which was the same thing as the Peter Tamargo one. That one, not the whammy one with Todd Newton. No. no. Sam, do you want to know what mine is? Do I want to tell him? Well, while you Ooh. think about it, if you're going to tell him, I'll change my answer just to troll David. This huh? Is, this is a little bit true because you said not anything but Sonic, but I'm gonna, I, I want to, I want to give one last jab into David. Price is right. Oh God, here we go. Price is right. right. I want the guy climbing the mountain. The I want guy. him holding the ball. The I want guy. him yodeling and dumping it out. I want you Plinko. Plinko. I want a back game. box that is Plinko. It will start in the topper. You will move it. You will drop it. It will Plinko down. I want it. 
David's been saying no to prices right for like two years. That's why I said it. I but did so many prices right games. That's the whole reason I said it because it would make him mad. Nah, I, know I do right. want to do it, but I, I knew I just really want to make him mad more. So, so <laughs> if 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 I had my dream scene and I I you know who knows maybe one day I would get it. I would definitely look at it. Probably be Smokey and the Bandit. Ooh, uh, Burt Reynolds. You're gonna play um, Burt Reynolds, right? Yeah, there you go. I'll play Burt <laughs> Reynolds. Um, but I can just see, you know, Jerry Reed's, you know, uh, that song playing, you know, down. And um, I can't think of the name of the town. Oh, God, the, the jump ramp I'd have to make Jump for that ramp game. in there. You know, it would be like jump. a high-speed, you know, three yeah. and just going to town and having fun with that. Uh, maybe even two-level or three-level or, you know. Hey, you know, I'm seeing some of these. I'm going to give a shout out. I'm going to tell you, I am so proud of the home brewers this year. Okay, forty over forty entries. This is amazing. Um, I'd like to also give a shout out to our friend Luke Underwood, who is here. Uh, Luke it. and his brother Owen. They put together the 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 uh, Pokemon. A uh, little little side note: Luke was our intern a summer ago. We were so happy to have him interning, and then he. Went back with all his found knowledge of being an intern with us and worked with his brother over the summer. And, you know, they they knocked out Pokemon's revision and then guys got to play it. And God, what a revision it is. Yeah. Wow. It's, if it's, anyone played it two years thought, ago, yeah. you haven't played it. Yeah. It is amazing. It's Go very check it amazing. Out. Along with the other 40. Yes. How many did we end up with? 39? How many showed up? Yeah. Well, there, we had 39 <laughs> planned and then I tried really hard to convince jack danger to bring dead flip even though it didn't work oh boy um so that might be here just to look at but i just wanted to get to that 40 so it's the Absolutely. most homebrews we've ever had at any show so it's shout incredible. out to you homebrewers thank you keeping it up american pinball is always here to support you we were happy last year to give out some extra parts we'll still be yeah. I think didn't we give out some cabinets and so forth? Uh, we we're we gave out some cabinets. We're also working with Ernie Silverberg. That's and, right. Uh, he's he's selling currently um, homebrew kits for around like a thousand bucks. He'll he'll cut your playfield for you. He gives you everything you need to get it flipping and three pop bumpers if you're into that. <laughs> um, but uh, we gave him so so last year we had all the homebrewers for a private tour at American Pinball, and uh, I had been hoarding. Every single part that American Pinball tried to throw away for well, two years. Well, I also kept <laughs> stopping them from throwing it away, yeah. too. They were Everyone like, ever going to throw all this stuff? No. They wanted uh, to throw out so much stuff, and David and I would literally go dumpster diving and pull uh, it out. We're like, no, don't throw it away. So, <laughs> so we gave oh, yeah. it all out, and anything they didn't take, we gave to Ernie, and now he gives it out for free with his kits. Yep. So you'll buy his kit, and he'll give you some random American pinball parts that he got from us, too. Um, and I, I recently heard that Marco is going to be doing homebrew kits, too, from seconds yep. that they're getting from all over the place. So we might start working with them, too. But okay, we love you guys. Thank you. Yes. You know, it's amazing where the homebrew has come and what they're coming from. Uh, think about it, Jack Danger, um, Keith Elwin. Um, I don't know anybody else from Massachusetts. No, Scott Denisi. <laughs> Scott yeah. Denisi. Uh, oh, uh, that's right. That, there's one guy from I know one guy from Massachusetts. I love him, Mark Seiden. Mark Seiden. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Mark Seiden yes, on a Mark beautiful Seiden first game. Avatar. I'm so proud of him. Yes, very good. John Norris. You're right. French. Uh, yeah. Tour de France, right? Yep. That's how you got a job. Um, are you going to also talk about the other the other game that was a homebrew before that one? Black Hole. Right, yeah. Black Hole was a homebrew, and then he designed three more, two more games. Uh, little 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 history. Go back in. I think Martin has it in Pinball News. I know he recorded it. There's a critical mass. Critical mass. Oh, that one's cool. That's a cool one. The, and the also, only officially licensed homebrew. He right. went. He went. He dug deep to get those Gottlieb licenses. Yeah, done. and and also he there was the three level that never got done, which was Dragon's Lair, uh, which was an absolutely cool thing. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was a Gottlieb. It was he was from Pennsylvania. He did the homebrew, took it to Gottlieb. Gottlieb bought it, and it was Black Hole. That was many, many, many years ago. That was an uh, amazing seminar. I yeah. love going to that. It's amazing. Yeah. 
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sitting, and we're so happy that you came. If anyone's still awake, yes. <laughs> please, like, I'm please. going to sleep. To sleep. Share your thoughts on Bar uh, Barrio's Barbecue. And uh, now you know a lot more of the rules and all the other fun stuff with that game.